Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. And today we have an 1800 or a 98% from FLE Sports. Um, maybe a lot of you, I'm guessing some of you will be familiar with the MK870. It was a really popular um, TKL that they put out. It had plugs on the side that you could actually take them out and use them. It had three different USB C plugs, which I mean, I guess I see if somebody wants to route it one way or the other, but the pocket was really deep. But I've got about three of them myself. They were fun to mod. Uh, they made great, pretty great keyboards, and you can actually work them plateless, um, which I did one build plateless, and I was able to get a um, aftermarket, I want to say FR4 plate. It could have been a PC plate, but it was. it's an easy to mod keyboard, and it was very well priced, I know. The cheapest that I got one for was, I think, $32.99, just the wired version. But there have been a couple of other. The Q75 is another one, and there's another one that I can't remember. It's been a while. But um, all of the keyboards I've taken a look at from FL Esports have been very solid, um, and I like them, and they're well-priced. This one right here is the CMK98, and it was sent out to me by WhatGeek um, in order for me to provide my honest review um, there's no payment there's no exchange of funds they just send me a keyboard as a sample review and i do the review on it so today we're going to take a look at this cmk98 i do my best not to look up too much about keyboards before i get into it but this appears to be a rgb not rainbow colored backlight and it does come with kale red box v2 oh as well as white and gray sa profile pvt keycaps my jam i'm a big fan of um sa profile in the box we find that we have a warranty card we have a user manual that shows us some of the functionality as well as a quick look at the software we've got the 2.4 gigahertz dongle that does not have the name of the keyboard or the brand. We have your standard wire switch and keycap puller. And we have a nicely braided USB A to USB C connector. And here we are with the FL Esports CMK98, a three mode 98%. Um, it is a plastic keyboard, but it does have significant um, aluminum in it. I think that's just an aluminum weight right there at the bottom. And we have an aluminum back plate where you have the switch and the mode switch as well as the USB-C connector, which as you can see is a bit recessed in there. We have a Windows and Mac switch in the bottom and we have two pairs of flip out feet for different angles. Now taking a look at the keyboard, I love the SA profile. Uh, nice big legends, they're not scared, Just sitting up in the corner. You can use the whole keycap. It's okay. Um, let's see what these keycaps look like. They are PBT and they are double shot. And they are 1.6 millimeters in thickness. That's a really nice thickness for stock OEM keycaps. They're in the MDA profile, but by OEM, meaning ones that come preloaded. So that is definitely a nice thing to see. And then we have the box kale reds. It would have been nice to see a few extra switches in the box, but there was none. All right, this, these reds do appear to be lubed because they have no ping whatsoever. They're nice and light as reds are and have a pretty snappy um, well, we don't seem to have anything on top of the PCB. We do appear to have a silicone layer between the plate and the PCB. And tell me. Oh, it's a steel plate. I thought it was well, it's kind of typed on it and it felt a little stiff. But I was kind of hoping for something better now. I mean, yes, there is an aftermarket. I'm sure there's already plates available for this. Well, I shouldn't say I'm sure, but I would 
venture to guess if I looked, I'd probably find it. And if nothing else, um, nowadays, just using your calipers in a few minutes, you can uh, create an STL file and either print one up yourself or go take it to your local 3D print shop and have them print it for you. And you've got a plate and a different material. Problem is, it's still going to be tray mounted. So it's, there is no give. It's just going to have that hot, harsh bottom out. Uh, let's check out the stabilizers here. All right, we have some decent stabilizers, and they just have enough grease on them. They are definitely not over lubed, but they are lubed. And let's see. Well, that's a shame. They don't seem to have holes on the PCB for screw on stabilizers. It's one thing that I did like about the MK870 is that you could go plateless because you could just screw in your stabilizers, um, which was a pretty good deal for such an affordable TKL. So, and that one was, like I said, was a steel plate as well, but it modded pretty good. And that first came out, I want to say, late 2021, maybe 20, early 2022. And um, <clears throat> so at the time, steel plates were still a very common thing. But nowadays, most of the keyboards that are coming out um, have basket-mounted PC, FR4, plates with different materials, even aluminum, which is fine. But putting out a tray-mounted steel plate in 2024 seems to me to kind of go against the grain and against what customers, consumers will be looking for. All right, let's go ahead and turn it on and check out the lights. Oh, that came on pretty instant. All right, it is, I did flip it on 2.4. Let me go ahead and take out the dongle and plug it in. All right, that was pretty fast, it connected and have a num lock indicator, caps lock indicator, scroll lock, but we don't have a scroll lock button. So, and guessing that's battery and charging. All right. Or is that mode? Let me switch this over to Mac. Nope, that doesn't change. So, I mean, obviously, part of the weight for this keyboard. I'm going to guess it's got silicone below the PCB, but that steel plate is probably making up a good amount of that we get when you see what the majority of the market is right now. That's what I don't understand. And, and not even putting like the IXP and the PET to at least bring a little life or some better switches because Kale's, I don't know. It, there was no reason to reinvent how mechanical switches actuated in my opinion. And I don't, um, not a big fan of the design of box switches from Kale. So I really don't understand why one would choose to use Kale as, um, as a default switch or a box kale anyway um, don't get me wrong there's a few that i like but i mean i like i'm not gonna lube them i mean if they sound good out of the box it's fine but taking them apart if you you know want to actually lube lube the leaf spring you got to take the box cover off and then if that button comes loose and you drop it it's gone that switch is done anyway um <clears throat> Well, this is definitely a solid built keyboard, and if you've been using tray mount keyboards, you probably, you know, you'll you'll probably be fine with it. But as I answered the other day um, to somebody, they're like, "Well, what's the biggest difference besides sound between a steel mounted tray plate, tray mounted steel plate? What's the difference besides sound between a 
tray mounted steel plate and a gasket mounted softer plate. And I'm like, well, for one, because your fingers are literally, I mean, think of a, uh, think of driving a car. Every time you hit the brakes, you know, you hit them hard, those brakes are going to wear out much quicker. In this context, it would be your fingers because you're just, you know, hitting, hitting the brakes hard or hitting the wall or hitting something. But when you're, you know, slowly hitting your brakes when you're driving, it's kind of that, but every single time that you press down on a key when you're typing on a gasket mounted keyboard, it's nice and soft. So you're not going to get as much strain or stress coming to your joints as you would from a tray mounted steel keyboard. And that I definitely know I who knows how many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lines of code I've written in my a career. And I definitely tell the difference. I mean, there was times, yes, I would I would code all weekend and my hands hurt. Like I had to take a day or two off of doing pretty much, you know, anything that required more than just a couple of taps on the keyboard. But I definitely there's the the times now since I've gotten gasket mounted keyboards and I'm going to go on a bit of a code marathon or just work a code for most of the day. Um, I definitely t can tell the difference in less fatigue and less stress on my joints of my hand um, when I'm using a gasket mounted keyboard. So that's why to me it's like, oh, it's a steel plate. I mean, I could like everything else about it, but if it's a tray mounted steel plate, it's like, oh. And I mean, if they did a good gasket mounted for steel, I mean, I, I could kind of forgive it because at least if it gave some, I mean, the whole thing would have to give. So I don't know what kind of, I mean, it, it would have to be some pretty thick gaskets for it to actually work and have some space in there. But softer material plates on gasket mounts, they just provide more of that flex. So it's like you're slowly hitting the brakes instead of slamming on them every single time. And that's my explanation of why I believe gasket mounting is better for long-term typing sessions. For a little bit of gaming, just a little bit of web browsing, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. But if you type for a living, if you're on the keyboard for a living, I, I would highly suggest to consider using a gasket mount keyboard. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the FL Esports CMK98, a three-mode 1800 or 98% mechanical keyboard. It does come with a tray-mounted steel plate and a 3 and 5 pin north-facing hot swap PCB. It is loaded with both kale box red switches and double shot PVT SA keycaps in the industrial colorway. It includes a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and comes weighing in at 1,598 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 21 millimeters while the back sits at 30, providing for a default typing angle of 6 degrees. Raising the first set of flip out feet will take the back's height to 34 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 7 degrees. Flipping out the final set of fold out feet will take the back up to 40 millimeters and change your angle of typing to 10 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $149.99. I don't know how I missed it. I actually do remember vaguely the blue and red version. There's several versions of this keyboard. Uh, there's a cotton candy. Um, there's a black, like, seafoam, I think it's called. Um, and there was the red, white, and blue one which I vaguely remember seeing on Amazon. It was released originally in 2022. So I can kind of see, you know, where it's coming from. But I mean, I've run businesses. So I know, especially when dealing with like things that change prices, like say Ram back in the nineties, we used to buy Ram. We'd buy it low because sometimes it would go up, sometimes it would come back down, but we waited till it was at the lowest because we saw other companies suffer 
when they were like just buying it when they needed stock and they bought it whatever price of the day was and ram for a little while was almost like a a stock market during the late 90s and so we would stock up on it like oh the price is down to i don't know thirty dollars for an eight megabyte stick <laughs> yeah um so we'd be like all right we're gonna buy you know that's the most common we're gonna go ahead and buy up i don't know 300 and people would be like why why that many you're only needing to build like two or three systems because then it would come around two months later they'd be up to like 85 dollars for the same same brand same stick of ram and at that point we didn't have to buy it because we had the stock and we had bought it when it was much cheaper so I understand the valuation and, you know, the price of things changing. So I understand why it's listed at the price it's listed. I don't agree with the price it's listed at because that price was fair when this came out in 2022. But in 2024, when you can literally get a um, fully loaded, you know, 98% 1800 for less than this, you know, switches and key camps, and there's several of them I'm not going to mention, but I mean, I just, I have a hard time going, oh yeah, this is a good pick. Now at a much lower price, yeah, I think that, that it's fine. Just because it's from 2022 doesn't mean that it can't be used in 2024. It's just that in 2024, this keyboard doesn't demand the price that it did in 2022. Hence, um, I mean, I know I had to mark stuff down and sometimes sell it at a loss. I mean, in the end, taxes kind of took care of everything if you had losses. But in order to move stock, especially if it was old, you had to bring down the price. Because otherwise, you were just, I mean, you're either selling you know, overpriced products that just don't fit today's market or, I mean, I, I just, I didn't feel doing that to customers was right in my opinion. So, you know, if the price of memory was at a low rate than some of the, you know, cause yeah, sometimes we overbought, but the amount that we would have left over when it, you know, they'd move up to the 16 megabyte chip or the 32 megabyte chip, um, we usually had, you know, so few left that what we had made up for profit for buying when it was cheaper, you know, kind of made the difference. Um, but I wouldn't have charged a customer for like, well, RAM is cheap right now, but we bought this RAM back when it was expensive. So I'm charging you more for RAM than if you were to go down the street to another um, MSP and have them build you a custom PC. So, and that's kind of where, I mean, I empathize with businesses that have these in stock and, you know, they paid that premium and they still have the stock and they haven't moved it and they want to sell it at the original MSRP. I sympathize, but at some point you got to cut your losses and you got to say, all right, what is this really worth? nowadays so i mean because i i like everything about it i just know that i'm not going to be able to use this for any length of time at a shot because my hands are going to fatigue my wrist my fingers they're going to fatigue because of the steel mounted or the tray mounted steel plate so um like i said for occasional just a little bit of web browsing a little bit of youtube a little bit of this a little bit of that um I don't think many people are gonna gonna mind, but I still think that it should be cheaper. Now I do like a lot of the accents on here, but one of the things that I just don't get is why there's no pocket for the 2.4. This is a huge case. There's plenty of spots where they would put it underneath the foot in a little nudge in there with the pocket in there with the pocket on the side. Um, there's a lot of spots where they could have made a pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz dot, and there isn't one. Um, I probably will come back 
to this keyboard and mod it because I know I can make it sound much better. I, I that, that I know because I cut my teeth on modding keyboards like this. Like, all right, it's steel, it's it's tray mounted. I'm gonna make it sound good at least. Um, but as it is, I mean, it it's a little listless. It's a little um. um It's not too loud, so I mean, I think it will work fine in an office environment, but it just doesn't have that oomph, that life. Um, the stabilizers sound okay. I know I could probably tune them and do a couple things to make them sound better. Like I said, I would probably come back to this keyboard and mod it and see what kind of life we can breathe into it. But, um, and uh, the software, I've taken a look at FL eSports software. It's the same as as uh, Key Duos. They use one driver for several keyboards, and it does have the layer ability, um, and it does have per key RGB. It's, it's one of the better closed source software, so I'll give them that much. But again, in, in today's market, I have to say, is this worth the MSRP from two years ago? And I, I just, I can't see that. So while it's not a bad keyboard, it's, it's, a, it's a decent keyboard at a bad price compared to what else is in the market today. Anyway, if you have any questions, any comments, anything you have to ask about this keyboard, any mod you'd like me to do when I come back to it, please leave them down in the comment section below. Um, I do my best to answer comments and questions as quickly as possible. And if you enjoyed this video or any of my other videos, a like, a subscribe really goes a long way and I truly appreciate it. Anyway, fellow humans, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.